One of the most common communications and functions going on your network right now is domain name services, workstations that are asking for the IP address to get to google.com and the domain name server responding back with that IP address. There are two utilities that can help you troubleshoot whenever you're having problems with some of those name servers. One is called NSLOOKUP and the other one is called DIG. And they are very similar in their functionality. You may find yourself using one or the other, but not usually both of them at the same time. These utilities are going to give you information about the IP addresses that are being resolved. It'll tell you information about canonical names that are configured in the DNS servers, give you information about IP addresses, cache timers, and so much more information. NSLOOKUP is a utility that you'll find in both Windows and Unix and Linux type systems. And it's used to perform troubleshooting, to be able to perform name queries to a server and reverse name queries and perform basic troubleshooting for those name tasks. You'll find on the Linux or the Unix side, you may see a message when installing it that it has been deprecated. It's no longer supported. And it says use DIG instead. And DIG is a much more functional program to provide you with a lot more detail. And if you're troubleshooting, you need that level of detail. Unfortunately, DIG is not something that is included with Windows. You would have to go out to the internet, get the source code, or find somebody that has already compiled DIG so that you can run DIG in your Windows environment. But if you're in your Linux environment or using a Unix type environment, then you'll find DIG may already be installed right there in the operating system. You can use it right away. Let's use both of these utilities and see the difference. Let's start with an NS lookup. And I'll type in NS lookup. And let's go out to do a lookup of my web server. So we'll just type in professormesser.com. And it responds back with a name server that professormesser.com we got that information from. We got a non-authoritative answer, which means that this answer did not come from directly from my local name server. My local name server had to ask another server what the answer was. So it is not authoritative. It's non-authoritative. But it did tell us that it, the www.professormesser.com did resolve, and the address is 74.208.221.234. We can also do a reverse lookup. If we know the IP address, we can determine what is the name that is in the DNS that's ultimately associated with that IP address. So let's do another NS lookup. And let's type in that IP address that we got, 74.208.221.234. And you see it does a reverse lookup of that IP address. And indeed, it comes back to be www.professormesser.com. Let's perform the same function now, but let's do it with dig. And we should see quite a difference. So let's dig www.professormesser.com. And the result we get is a lot more detailed. First, we can see the options that were used for the dig that we're running. We did get an answer. We can see that it was a query. There was no error. There's an ID associated with it. And there are a number of flags that were used for the query. We got an answer back. Here's the question that was asked. So dig effectively repeats back what we had asked. And that was to give us an internet address of www.professormesser.com. And here's the answer that dig got back www.professormesser.com. And you can see there's a number after this, 73815. That is a cache or a timeout number associated with that domain. So I'm not going to be able to get an updated version of that until a time frame goes by, in this case, less than 24 hours, until you're able to get an updated or fresh number there. And my internet address is 74.208.221.234. So if somebody had already cached this particular DNS entry and I changed my IP address, we would have to wait for that timeout value on their local server to finally time out before it asks for a new DNS update from my local DNS server. This query took 29 milliseconds. You can see the server that we were using to communicate out to get that information. You can see the timestamp and the message size that was used. So when you're doing a dig, you can see there's a lot more detail inside of it, which is probably a good reason why Everybody's saying, don't use NS Lookup anymore. If you're going to be doing any real troubleshooting, DIG is going to be the utility for you.